Well, Rams, it is about time for my weekly catharsis. <laughs> Down in the DMs opens tonight with a question from Jason DeMarco. He asks, will the Packers make the Super Bowl before Aaron Rodgers retires? What do you think? I like that smile. I feel like well, you're Well, I'm just wondering. Ready. I'm just excited. <laughs> All right. Well, I... I don't know, honestly. I, I want to say that they I will, but I think that the uh, the franchise needs to learn how to treat their quarterback a little better than they kind of did this past season. When you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, who just won MVP, I mean, it's showing mm -hmm. that he's getting older, but he's not slowing down anytime soon. He, You do not go out and draft a quarterback in the first round. Yep and make him angry while it did work because he got angry and he wanted to play his heart out you don't do that and as long as uh, i think if the franchise can figure out what they're doing i think it'll be okay like i said he just won mvp for this past season he's looking for revenge i don't see him retiring anytime soon so i think they have a good chance to get to the super bowl yeah i i i i don't know if i agree because now it's even a question of how long will aaron Rodgers even still be in green bay yeah. before he retires like does this question still count if they make it to the Super Bowl? <laughs> Without but him? But he's at a different <laughs> team. Um, I mean, I think you brought up a great point, you know. His front office has basically done nothing but disrespect mm -hmm. him for two years. He said, you know what, I'm going to be the MVP, and I'm going to create a little discourse in the offseason. You know, make people doubt if I actually want to be here. Because Aaron Rodgers is one of the most arrogant men in all sports. Oh, yes. You don't step on that dude's toes. He's and stirring up the I, pot. He's going to stir it up. I don't think he ends up with a, even going to the Super Bowl with Green Bay. I feel he might like his, go with a, with a different team. His perfect story is going with a different yeah. team. I think that would definitely be his perfect mm -hmm. story. But I think he's trying to stir the pot, make them realize that he's an asset for them and he should not be going anywhere. Yep. I don't see him leaving Green Bay right now, maybe in the next coming seasons, but I don't see him right now. I see him staying with Green Bay at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was very quick, and we're going to move on to our second question, which comes from at RxBash on Twitter. Who won the Carson Wentz trade, Ethan? I mean, it's hard to really say which team won it, but one person that did win it is Carson, <laughs> Carson Wentz. Like, but in, in reality, I mean, he's the winner. And not only is he being reunited with Frank Reich, who was the, the offensive coordinator who, in 2017, who helped him to the mm -hmm. best season of his career. Mm -hmm. So he's got to be excited about that. No. But on the other hand, why, 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 <laughs> why would the Eagles accept a condition that he plays 75% of the snaps for the Colts, for the most broken quarterback in all of football? That part doesn't make sense. True winner Carson Wentz, middle Colts, definite loser Eagles. Oh, yeah, I would agree with that 100%. I definitely think that Wentz won this trade as a person. I definitely think he won no. this. Um, I it, It's just hard for him because, one, he's injury prone, like you talked about. And, two, there is a big up-and-coming qu quarterback right behind him on the Eagles. Jalen Hurts is still a good quarterback and he's also very injury prone. But I think this is good for the Eagles in the sense that they have a quarterback that they can actually build with. And because they're getting draft picks from the Colts, I think that that helps with their rebuilding of their whole team, not just with their quarterback. But, I mean, what happens when, I'm mm -hmm. going to say when, when Jalen Hurts gets hurt? What happens, when, what happens when Carson Wentz get hurt, gets hurt? I mean, the Colts, I mean, they signed Phillip Rivers. How much faith did they have in their quarterback anyway? I don't want to get into this with you right now, all right? You, this is not something we need to talk about, okay? He is gone. He needs to be signed to a one-day contract by the Chargers so that he can be retired as a Charger. But that's fine. We don't have to talk about that. You I talked about it. You I did not say anything up. about that. You brought up Philip Rivers, which you did not need to do. It was a fair point. It was a fair point. It wasn't a dig. I think you're wearing it was your... kind of a dig. The you way show you up smiled your, at you me show, You show up wearing your leather jacket and you're just... You think you can yell at me? Okay, on, yeah? Easter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's move on anyway to the last question, please, before we start lastly, arguing about something lastly, other than sports. Lastly, lastly, lastly. <laughs> a question from our friend Owen Who has the biggest NBA ceiling of Luca Garza, Coffee Cockburn, Hunter Dickinson, or Sandro Mukashvili? Ma Mukashvili. I'm going to try my best. It's to all good. That it's all good. Um, all right. This one for me, I'm going to have to go with Coffee Cockburn because, really? yeah, 
Not only is he a powerhouse on offense, but he's also making the moves on defense. He is averaging a double double right now. He's a seven foot, two hundred and eighty five center. I mean, I'm terrified to even just stand next to him. <laughs> that's but an that's NFL linebacker because right there. <laughs> I, I, I am also like half his size, maybe shorter and smaller than that but anyway he's averaging a double double and if you saw an interview there's an interview with michigan state tom Izzo, who called him a man child and says he hasn't seen a big man the size the likes of him since shack and i think that is a huge compliment and says a lot about this kid it is high praise it is very high praise and i mean the only two guys that i knew from this question if i'm being completely honest were <laughs> luca garza and coffee cockburn the other two guys i mean dickinson uh, I mean, he's just a freshman. He's got That's a lot of promise. A, yeah. uh, NBA ready? Not quite. Mamukla Chevelli from Seton Hall. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's got the lowest potential of the group. He is a senior, he's, too. He is a senior. I mean, if you're looking at seniors right now, it's all Luca Garza. It's, it's, I mean, Luca Garza is my answer to this I was question. Say, so yeah. is that your answer? I, 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 I would agree <laughs> that Cockburn has the highest offensive pot potential Kay. for the NBA mm -hmm. and board potential. Right. But I mean, we're talking about big men and how impressive they've mm -hmm. been in you know the past past decade. There has not been a more pure scoring big man in the NCAA since, than Luca Garza. Absolutely. I mean, the dude. He, he, it's almost unfair to to call him a big man. He scores like a guard. <laughs> He's shooting forty four point four percent from three this year. Just the Iowa point leader too. Yeah. So in school I, history. If you're if you're if you're, it's Luca Garza all the way. If you're an NBA if you're an NBA team, you are salivating over that guy. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. Um, I mean, it's like a nice steak. Looking at him as a yeah, prospect. Uh, yeah. Okay. A, yeah, as a prospect. It's a, good, it's it's a metaphor. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay. That is all the time we have for this discourse for tonight. So follow us on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> at sports underscore CTV to stay updated on all things CSU Athletics. I'm Ethan Bird. And I'm Rachel Hallam. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night to catch an inside look into Rams football with Ellison Hubbard. Good night, Rams.